Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about no crank, no start conditions in 2009 through 2013 4L60E equipped vehicles where uh, you had no previous history, recent history of starting or charging problems. So when we say no crank, no start, that means that when you go to turn the ignition on, you know, fire it up, nothing happens. You get no movement from the starter, you get no movement or no activity from the engine. It's just simply dead. Now, what differentiates and distinguishes this particular condition is going to be its associated cause, okay? And that cause is sitting there on the bench in front of you. And that part is known as the internal mode switch. In 2009, um, the 4L60, he saw a whole host of changes to its command and control and communication framework. And so I'll refer to that as C3 for you know the rest of the way. And so what they did is they eliminated the following parts. The, man, uh, the pressure switch manifold assembly, the manual lever position sensor, as well as the 3-2 control solenoid and associated 3-2 control valve and spring in the valve body. Now the 3-2 control valve and spring um, and its uh, associated solenoid aren't, aren't germane to this discussion, but the other two are. So. The uh, manual lever position sensor and the pressure switch manifold assembly kind of joined forces and tag team to fulfill one function, and that is um, communicate range position to the powertrain control module. So whenever you got in and you uh, attempted to start your vehicle, the manual lever position sensor would fire a communication signal to the PCM as soon as you put, you know, key on engine off before you actually turn the key over one more, uh, you know, I guess, you know, one more part revolution to crank it over, it sends that signal at the speed of light to the PCM to confirm that the vehicle is actually in either park or neutral. And it uses channel N and is in November to do that. So if the manual lever position sensor fails, then that uh, that bit of communication will not reach the PCM and therefore the PCM will not let you start the vehicle. You'll be locked out completely. You'll have a no crank, no start condition. Now, what will differentiate this situation um, as from the point of view of the driver relative to other no crank, no start conditions where the battery is truly dead is that all your interior accessories and lights and radio and stuff like that will all work. Okay, they will all function. You'll be able to turn the radio on and you know put different stations or listen to music. Uh, you'll be able to turn your headlights on. The you know AC and stuff may may work depending on you know I guess the health of the system, but you will not be able to start the vehicle and nothing will happen. It'll be like it's dead in the water otherwise. So the internal mode switch replaced the manual lever position sensor and the pressure switch manifold assembly starting in 2009 model year vehicles that came with 4L60Es. And they eliminated the um, MLPS that was bolted to the outside of the case right over the selector shaft. And then they also eliminated the pressure switch manifold assembly, which, you know, again, in concert with the MLPS was communicating range position on a continual basis. So think of like the P, uh, um, excuse me, the MLPS was the primary uh, communication node prior or pre-ignition prior to starting up the vehicle and then the pressure switch manifold assembly took over once the vehicle was running because it would uh you know line pressure would generate and it would shoot pressure up through to the pressure switches on that manifold based on where the manual lever was uh your manual valve was excuse me um you know on the valve body so the internal mode switch does the job of both of those things and this is the uh, back side of it so it comes as an integrated rooster comb and sensor assembly and anytime you overhaul an 09 through 2014 model year 4L60E you always replace this with um, a genuine GM part equivalent all right never ever buy an aftermarket sensor switch so these secure to the selector shaft via a roll pin. And the roll pin is very easy to knock out. And it's very easy to reinstall or install the new one. And they do come with uh, new roll pins. So you don't reuse your, you know, the pre-existing one. And then so your detent roller will go here. 
Okay, in fact, let me go get one so you can see. So your detent roller is gonna go right in here in this position. And then as you're moving through the detents, you know, this will click over multiple times. Okay, say like this. Yeah, you move it again. There it goes. This switch is going to communicate that position, wherever it is you stop, to the uh, PCM. And it's also going to communicate the differences in uh, continuity values that take place as you're moving through your gears. So if this thing fails and you cannot communicate range position to the PCM, you know, or it cannot, I should say, then you'll be dead in the water and you, you know, you'll be able to start the vehicle. So one way to mitigate the risk when it comes to these is to just simply proactively replace them. I would suggest every 80 to 100,000 miles. So if you buy a vehicle used, it's got over 100 on it, you have no service records or at least nothing that would uh, prove to you that it was replaced at any point in the past, then I would replace it the next time you do a um, fluid and filter change. You know, you could do all that at once. And like I said, it's very easy. Um, you don't necessarily have to drop the valve body to get this on and off. Um, on forums, you know, just in chatting with different members that have this issue and, you know, they talk about how to replace it. Um, many can just simply take the, you know, the roll pin out, take the selector out or get it out of the way and then pull the mode switch off and put the new one on without having to drop the valve body. Obviously, with the valve body out of the way, it's a lot easier, you know, a lot less cumbersome, but it's not necessary to do. So, you know, if you're a DYIer, but you don't want to get too far into it, you just want to replace this thing, you should be able to do it without taking the valve body off. All right. Um, if it helps, just take a picture before you, you know, begin your work. So if you want to go the extra step and you want to be ready in the event you have to replace it in a pinch, then have like a bucket, okay? Um, a roll pin punch of the appropriate size along with a transmission pan with a drain plug. Like I wouldn't bother doing this on the side of the road unless I can drain the fluid out nice and clean into a bucket. And then maybe you have like an empty five quart, you know, transmission fluid container. You could pour the transmission fluid in there, you know, the, the fluid that you took out. And then with a funnel, you can put it all back in once you've done what you had to do. Um, a good way to kind of dovetail that um, when it comes to readiness is to pair it with, um, I think it's Victor Rains, um, but it might be somebody else. They make a reusable, um, bonded steel or internal steel and metal, um, rubber gasket for the pan. And that gasket, as long as it's not damaged, can be reused essentially an infinite amount of times. So if you put one of them on and then, uh, or you have one in your vehicle, you know, you'll be ready to go. And yeah, I know it sounds like a pain in the ass, especially if the weather sucks or you're in austere conditions and it just doesn't really lend itself to doing work on the vehicle. I mean, at least you have a means to deal with the problem and kind of self-rescue versus waiting on, you know, a tow truck or whatever. So anyway, um, this mode switch came out of a 4L60E, the 2010 model year unit. I don't remember how many miles it has on it, but, um, you know, we put a new one on, so... You know, anytime you overhaul these things, you always want to reset the clock to zero so you're not, you know, having this thing be like a ticking time bomb just waiting to go off. All right, so now you have an overview of what this thing is, what it does, and kind of how it works and the impact it has on the way the transmission functions and when it fails, the impact it can have on you in terms of leaving you stranded. Um, what I'm going to now show you is how to use a multimeter to confirm or deny that you have an internal mode switch problem. So all these mode switches kind of work in the same fashion when it comes to, you know, um, testing, etc. In that, they all have a multi-pin connector. This one happens to have six pins. And each of these pins will either provide resistance, i.e. continuity, or they will be open based on the differences 
in range position. So, you know, as you cycle through your shifter, each of these pins will read out either, you know, some resistance value or they'll show as open. So what we want to do, once you have this on the bench like this, is grab a multimeter, turn it on and set it to read in ohms. Okay. And then you're going to put your um, power lead here on this far right pin, the one that has corresponds to this, you know, kind of high rise um, feature here. All right, you're going to put your uh, power lead right there and then you're going to put, you know, I guess a, uh, you know, whatever sequential manner, you're going to put your ground on each of these pins and then start cycling through the ranges to see what the pattern looks like, continuity versus open. And that will tell you if, in fact, you have a mode switch problem or not. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. So we'll going to put our power here. I'm going to make sure it's on. And then we'll go ahead and put our ground. And I'll start at the far left. All right. So right now we have continuity in park. Okay, this is in park. So now we'll go ahead and start moving it. Shift in the reverse. We see we have no continuity. It's open. Neutral. Continuity, no continuity in drive, D3, 2, or manual low. So you can go in reverse, continuity there in neutral, nothing in reverse. Now we're back to park and we have continuity. So now I'm going to move it over to this next pin. We still have continuity in park. Nothing in reverse. Continuity in neutral. Continuity in drive. D3. 2. And manual low. Okay, we'll move it over. Start again. Continuity. Continuity. Open. Continuity. And you can just re keep repeating this process until you're all out of pins, or positions, rather. All right, so that's how you test an internal mode switch. I've tested four of these and they all, you know, they all produce the same values, at least the four that I have. I've been looking all over online for like an official um, uh, IMS continuity or resistance chart that, you know, is either from a factory service manual or the um, ATSG manual or something like that, ATRA, you know, some official publication. But I, I have not been able to find one, so I've just been making my own with the mode switches that I have just laying around the shop. So um, feel free to leverage what I have. If you're not sure about it, then, you know, don't use it. But uh, this is how you conduct the continuity testing to confirm or deny that you have an internal mode switch problem or failure. And then, you know, like I said, replacement on these is fairly straightforward, especially if you have a pan with a drain plug in it. And I mean, if you don't, I would strongly recommend you invest in a, a nice pan, especially if you have some ground clearance, put a BNN deep pan on it and you'll be very happy. Um, makes um, changing out fluid or draining the fluid a hell of a lot easier, less messy, and 
you have an extra couple quarts of capacity, I think they add three quarts for every single one of their pans for all makes and models of transmissions. So it's a good upgrade, um, especially if you live in a hot, arid, dry climate like I do. Um, transmission temperatures need to be kept under control. So anyway, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something or, you know, you can apply this information to solve a problem you may have that's related to the IMS. If you have any questions or you want to see other topics delved into as it relates to 4L60Es or, you know, any GM or Ford Dodge transmission, just let me know in the comments and I will look to prioritize it as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate your viewership. And until the next time we meet up, enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Take care. Have a good one.